Dave here, how are you? You may remember a few weeks ago I posted a photo on Facebook of the absolute debacle that is known as my router tables accessory drawer. Stick with me, I'll show you how I rectify Okay, have it. a look down here. This is the finished article. How nice is that? I'm going to go through the process of how I did it. First thing was to work out what's to stay in the drawer and what wasn't to stay in the drawer. That's half the problem. This drawer is so handy to throw things in, shut the drawer, mess gone. <laughs> okay, so how I did it was I pulled everything up and put it up on the bench and had a look at it all and thought, right, I don't need clamping accessories. Somehow they would found their way in. I don't need a whole lot of things in there. I just wanted the router cutters. I wanted the push blocks. I wanted a little box for Allen keys and things like that to change bearings on the cutters. I needed the spanner to be able to take cutters out of the router table, things like that. Tone, totally things that pertain to that little machine over there. Moved everything out that wasn't going to live there. Then I started sitting the bulky items of the things that I wanted in here. Played around with a few different layouts and finally settled on one. Next thing to do is to actually make it. So I needed to make a divider at the front here with some other smaller partitions to house the bulky things, which I did. Edge stripped some melamine and uh, cut it up, made the unit, nailed it in with a gun. And that's that. Next thing to do is to actually work out how many cutters I have of half inch shank and how many cutters of quarter inch shank and what I might need further down the track. I have a couple of large cutters that have got large wings on them, so I needed some space around the cutters so I wasn't bumping into them or bumping into the other cutters and cutting myself on them because they're all sharp. I started off by thinking, well, I'll come in 50 millimeters from the side and I'll go 100 millimeters between cutters. And then I thought, well, I don't have to have all the big cutters together. I could have a big cutter and then a small cutter, a big cutter, small cutter. So I didn't need to create such big gaps between. So then what I ended up doing, shrinking it down to 70 millimeters, all of my lines, my grid was 50 millimeters by 70 millimeters for the half inch cutters. And when I got down to the quarter inch cutter section, I went 50 by 50 on the grid. I wanted to have a bit of an angle on it so I could not just look down on the top of the cutter, I wanted to see a 3D vision of the cutter. So I wanted to look down and also at the side at the same time. That's why I created this slope. The other advantage of the slope of the, on the uh, support here is that any dust that lands there will trickle down to the back and it's just a matter of run the vacuum cleaner across the back if I want to clean it out. Easy to do. Next thing to do is to get a piece of melamine and cut an angle on it. I just guessed the degree <laughs> on the edge here, but I went to 15 degrees and it worked perfectly. And before we put it in there, I thought, well, it would be a good idea to actually mark the grid out and drill the holes. I was originally going to do it with the drill press because that would give me a nice perpendicular hole. But because of the thickness or because of the width of the board, the drill press's head won't come out far enough. It'll only do one row. So I couldn't get to the second row. There's the advantage. If I wanted to, I could get a radial arm drill press so I could bring it all the way out to the center. But I thought, I've been in the industry 30 years. I can drill a hole pretty close to straight up and down without a problem. Grid's all uh, drawn out. Got a nail punch because I haven't got a center punch here at the moment. So I got a very fine nail punch and just punched a hole on each intersection. And then I got a 13 millimeter drill because I don't want the cutter to actually be sticking in the hole. I just wanted to have good good support. I got a 13 millimeter drill and drilled all of the areas that were half inch. Now I did draw a little circle around each corner of the grid that was going to be half inch and wrote 13 mil or half inch and quarter inch on the other one. So I didn't just go drilling straight across when I, you know, I get going to robot mode when I'm doing these many holes. Drilled it all out. Then because the top is chipped and it was my plan anyway, I grabbed one of my through hole countersink bits and just chamfered off the top of each hole. And they look great. How good is this little device? Anyway, have it all ready to go. Pop it in the drawer, a couple of nails, and then start loading it up. And that was the fun part. I, I, I love, I'm, I move these things around. It's like playing chess. I look at it and go, hmm, that could look better. Now, whether it's going to stay like that, I have no idea. I am tempted to get my little labeling machine and put labels there so I know where everything lives. But is that being obsessive? Am I over the top? I don't know. <laughs> you tell me. Anyway, it looks great. 
And I hope that the things that I've shown you today may give you a little bit of inspiration to do something like this at your place. Thanks for watching. Again, links in the box. Give you a thumbs up. See you next time. Bye. Ha, ha, ha.